In this video, I'm making two carbon fiber Mandalorian helmets and I will give them away. So make sure to subscribe now to enter the giveaway. The first thing I like to do is to check on the internet for existing free models that I can modify. Do not waste your time. If you can find 3D models available for free, you do not have to redo it. I'm using Blender to modify the 3D model before making a 3D printable mold. Sometimes the model will have complex geometries or too many details that are difficult to make. I decided to make most of the helmet in carbon fiber and the smaller details in epoxy resin. Here I'm applying a filler to have a better surface finish. I'm using a wood filler. It's much easier to sand than automotive fillers. Most of the time I do not use fillers because I only use the mold a few times and I sand and polish the final part anyway. It is better to sand and polish the final parts if you use the mold just a few times. And you should put most of the work on your molds if you want to use them a lot of times. Then I try to reduce the porosity of the mold as much as possible. I like to use a sealer and a release agent. The products to use depends on what is available where you live, how much time and money you are willing to spend and what surface finish you want. In my online course, I go more in depth about reusable 3D printed molds. You will learn the mistakes to avoid, saving you plenty of time and money. I also make all the 3D models available there. Make sure the surface is clean before closing the mold and apply a layer of protection to prevent the resin from leaking out of the mold. I use plasticine because it's easier to apply and does not harden. Then I use a small scale with 0.1 gram of precision to pour the resin, then I slowly mix the resin to prevent having too many air bubbles. You can use epoxy resin like the ones used to make rival tables. To have the best result, you should use a degassing chamber or a pressure pot. I'm not going to use any of these methods and you will see that we can still achieve good results. While the resin is curing, I'm making the carbon fiber part. The carbon fiber cloth I'm using has a toe size of 3K, is woven in a 2x2 twill weave and weighs about 200 gram. 3K means each toe has 3000 fibers of carbon. 2x2 twill weaves refers to the pattern of the fabric. This type of weave pattern is easier to use on a mold with complex geometry. I also think it looks much better. And 200 grams is the weight of the cloth. The cloth will weigh 200 grams for one square meter. The ratio between the epoxy and the carbon fiber or fiberglass cloth should be around one. So for each gram of carbon fiber, you will add one gram of epoxy resin. I'm also using an aluminum coated fiberglass. Before adding the carbon fiber, make sure the surface is clean. Then carefully place the fabric on the surface of the mold. You do not want to deform the weave too much. Use a brush to apply the epoxy. Cut the excess carbon fiber, add the layers of peel ply, release film and breather and put the mold in a vacuum bag until the resin hardens. Then remove all the layers and use a sharp knife to cut the excess carbon fiber. I do not want to demold the part at this stage. I use a strip of carbon fiber to assemble the two halves of the helmet. To make the helmet more rigid, I 3D printed this part and glued them inside the helmet. And for the aluminum coated helmet, I repeated the same steps using the same molds. It's time to demold the resin parts. As you can see, the parts are easy to demold. For the carbon fiber helmet, I decided to use a gold spray paint and I use a black spray paint with the aluminum coated helmet. The last part is 3D printed. I think it looks better than the carbon fiber. You could also make a 3D printed mold for this part. You can produce professional looking parts if you use resin. It's much easier to sand and polish Check my Doom Eternal sword video. You can see how far we can go making resin parts. To make the sword, I only used my 3D printer, a drill and a flashlight. Once the paint is dry, I glue everything together and add a layer of varnish to the helmet. Then I add the visor and attach it to the helmet. To enter the giveaway, it's really simple. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and Instagram. This is where the winner will be selected.